Welcome to UC Collaboration, a global name in unified communication, formerly Voice Bootcamp. Hi, my name is Faisal Khan, founder and CEO of UC Collaboration. In this CCIA Collaboration and CCNV Voice Foundation Self-Study Kit, we're going to focus on call features. Call features such as call park, call, uh, pickup, BLF speed dials, native call queuing, call hunting, and meet me conference. A call park is a feature that allows you to place a call on hold so that it can be retrieved from another phone. When, an, when you are on an active call and you wish to pick up that call from a meeting room or a warehouse because you have to, you have to go there, without having to disconnect the call, you advise the user to, put, uh, to stay on hold, then you pre press a park soft key on your phone. And when you press a par uh, park soft key, based on predefined park extension, Call manager will par uh, hold that call to a temporary extension known as park, uh, call park extension. Now, while you park the call, before you leave, look at the LCD screen of your phone. It will show you what extension the call has been parked on. Then you move you move to the other room, uh, either the meeting room, warehouse, whatever, uh, another phone in your cluster. Simply dial that extension that was displayed on your LCD screen, and the call will be transferred there. Now to configure uh, call park, uh, it requires you to uh, define a range of uh, extensions which will be used for call park. You can configure a range of extensions by going to call routing menu, select call park, and then define a range. Now keep that in mind, call park number and range are associated with a particular server. That means if that server goes down, then those in the range of, range of numbers will not be available. Also. It also depends on which phone is being uh, registered to what server. Uh, it is important to understand that because when f when uh, phone A, for example, puts phone B on ho um, phone A calls phone B, phone A is registered to publisher, phone B is registered subscriber. Now, depending on who's who press up call park, what's going to happen is a calling party park uh, call park number will be selected based on the calling party's call manager where, the, where it is registered to. So it's going to choose a call, call park number from the same server. So it is important that you define the same uh, range or a different range, doesn't matter. One for publisher and one for subsequent servers. Now call park has some settings, for example uh, under service parameter. Um, there are times where you may need to tweak these parameters to achieve certain tasks. Here for example under system menu, service parameter, call manager services we have uh, under general uh, feature general we can define some call park related settings for example if we want to uh, provide a longer time it ta uh, to display the, that number on your LCD screen which notifies you what number call has been parked on then you can change the call park display timer if you want the original caller ID to be high uh, prioritized you can define that value to true which is what you say is caller ID display pr uh, priority enable. Call park rever uh, re reversion timer, which is basically number of seconds to wait before returning a parked call party to the user who parked the call. Monitoring a reversion timer basically determines the number of seconds to wait before prompting the user to retrieve the call that user has parked initially. So just to notify you, just in case if you forget, that you should be notified that there is a call has been parked because if you park the call and you all of a sudden happens to do something else and then you may have forgot that somebody is still waiting there so that's one of the reasons why you need to make sure you uh, change the settings to meet your requirements now I'm going to show you how to configure call park so from call routing you go to call park and I'm going to click on add 25xx and define the publisher call manager server now like I said that the call park numbers are associated with a particular server so if I take a look at my phone I should see at least one phone that I have registered to for example subs uh, subscriber now I'm going to open my other two remote testing phone So I have 4004 and 2004 plus my IP communicator in between. So 
So I'm going to call from 4004 to 3003. So the, here you can see the call has a uh, call is ringing. So I'm going to answer the call and then click on park. So it says call parked at 2500. So right now 4004 actually calls 3003. So calling number is the 4004, which is registered to publisher. IP communicator is registered to subscriber. From this particular phone, I'm going to dial 2500. And as you can see, the call is being transferred to that particular phone. So that's uh, call part uh, feature. Uh, now it was able to, because on, a pub, on the IP communicator, I pressed the park soft key. Call manager looked at the calling party, which is 4004 see which server is registered to and I picked up a call part number from that server now because 4004 is registered to publisher so therefore it is picking up a range from the publisher right now we only have publisher anyway uh, as far as the call part is concerned so I'm going to do a quick test for other way around so this time I'm going to call from IP communicator to let's say 4004 we answer the call so let's see if I can park the call. You see when I click on park on this phone, it says no park number available. Why? Well, when I press the park soft key on 4004, which is the IP blue, what happened was it went to the calling party, which is IP blue, it's an IP communicator, and real find out which call manager the IP communicator is registered to. In this case, IP communicator is registered to publisher, sorry, subscriber. Now, the, there is no subscriber for call park number for subscribers. So this is what, what I was trying to uh, clarify. So what we're going to do, we can create a same range, 25XX, but the problem is same range already exists for publisher. The system is going to give you a call party already exists, an error message. So we have to choose either a different range, let's say 26XX, or if I want to use 2500 as the same range, then I must use partition to uh, distinguish them. However, because we are not covering partition and calling source space at this moment, so therefore we will just skip this and use a different range. So right now what I, what I have is, I have a 2500 will be used when any phone registered to publisher will be, that is being uh, on part. Any phone that is registered subscriber will use 2600. An example, I will uh, redial, answer, and when I park the call right here, it will take it from 2600. Thank you for calling. Please wait while we transfer your call. Okay, see call park at 2600. And 2600 came from subscriber. So that's one of the important part about call park that you have to remember. The next topic is directed call park. Now directed call park allows the user to transfer a call to available user selected directed call park number. So in this case, what, what really happened is you define, a de uh, you, de you dedicate a number for each department. And for example, you might have engineering department, sales department, then every department get a dedicated number. Whenever there's a call for that particular department, the receptionist can transfer the call to that particular number directed number where the call will be held then either you're using a paging system chatting system you can tell uh, the engineering department that you have a call on your call park or on your mailbox whatever however you want to label them now the issue is that how does the people from that particular department retrieve the call simply dialing the directed call park number this is not going to work what you need to do is choose a retrieval code a prefix so this is the directory uh, call park for uh, directed call park for engineering department 2299. A customer calls in, says I wish to talk to someone from engineering department. Receptionist transfer the call to 2299. Advi using the paging system, advise engin engineering department to receive the call. Someone from the engineering department will pick up their handset or phone, 
dial 552299. So 55 is to retrieve the call and 2299 is to retrieve the call from that particular directed call park. So to create a directed call park, I would go to call routing menu, select directed call park. And here I have created a directed call park called 2400 with a retrieval prefix of 99. So now I'm going to to call from 4004 to 3003 I'm going to answer the call and transfer I'm not going to press the park key I'm going to transfer to what 2400 Thank you for calling please wait while we transfer your call to the next available representative Sorry that's a wrong uh, platform here It's because of uh, Hunting is configured. So let's try from here. Answer the call. Transfer. Thank you for calling. Please wait while we transfer your call to the next available representative or issuers. Please stay on the line and your call. Okay, so I had to disable some uh, other configuration uh, that was causing that uh, aud audio to come in. So I'll try again from 4004 dial 3003. Answer the call. Click on transfer 2400. It says two park number. Okay, transfer. It says call park at 2400. Now from this phone, if I dial 2400, I'm going to get a fast busy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to dial 992400. And the call come to this particular phone. So that's what uh, call park, uh, directed call park does. So call pickup is uh, another feature that is uh, very useful for a small group of engineers or salespeople working together. So this is more like a, a support group where a call comes in, goes to a group of imp imp users or agent. Now if one of the agent happens to be on a coffee break or went to a bathroom or something like that, and there's a call come in to that particular user's phone, well the rest of the uh, people in that group could easily easily pick up that call by from their phone without, to mo without moving from their chair. So this is called call pickup from your own phone on behalf of someone else. So call pickup features allows user to pick up an incoming call within their own group or from a different group. So when you pick up uh, calls from within your own group, you just simply press a pickup key and as long as both phone, the ringing phone and your phone belongs to the same group, then the call will transfer to you. But if you are picking up a call from a, someone who belongs to a different group, then you can still pick up the call by pressing the group pickup key followed by the group number. Every pickup group that you create must have a group number, and you have to remember the group number in, in order to pick up uh, pick up the call from that uh, from that different group. Now, in case if you do not remember the group number, you can still pick up the call by pressing the group number, uh, the group pickup key plus the directory uh, extension number of the phone that is ringing. Now, to configure call pickup, we must define a pickup group with a name and a directory number and then any other settings like visual and audio alert. And then we apply this particular group to every line level of the phone by going to the line one, selecting the call pickup group. So to show you that, I will go to call routing go to call pickup group now I have two pickup groups support and support level 2 support has extension 2801 support level 2 has extension of 2777 now I have applied these two group 
IP communicator and 2004 belong to same group. So I go to line one. See right there, pickup group. This is where I define support. And I've, I've done the same thing. So these two phone belong to one group, while this phone belongs to separate group, 4004. So what I'm going to do using my jabber, I'm going to try to dial 2004. The phone is ringing on this phone, and I'm going to pick up that call from my IP communicator. So I'm going to say new call, pick up. So therefore call comes to me now. Now I'm going to repeat that but this time I'm going to pick it up from a different group. So phone is ringing. I'm not sure what's going on. I'm going to try again. Okay, on this phone, I'm going to say new, more. If I press a pickup key, nothing happens. If I press new, more, group pickup, and the group number 2801. See, the call came to me now. Right there. Answer the call, everybody's happy. So the call pickup could be very useful function for a small group working together. In order for the call pickup to work efficiently, you gotta be in a uh, close proximity so that you know who's ringing and who's not. The next feature is called BLF speed dial, busy lamp field speed dial. Basically, busy lamp field speed dial provide native presence capability within call manager without having to have a presence server. A phone can add BLF speed dial of another phone to see that person's status. So the extension that you're trying to monitor or who the, whose presence is status that you want to see is known as the entity and you by yourself is known as the watcher. BLF speed dial must be configured on IP phone to see the status. Entity, the DN that is being watched, watcher, the phone that is monitoring the status of the other extension. Now you can uh, use speed dial as a way to find out if the other person is available or not but the s at the same time you can also take a look at your corporate directory on your phone as well as miss call place call receive call see the status of the other person to see if the person that you're trying to call already exists uh, already in a call or not so to support the presence in the call list or pre uh, in the directory we must enable BLF for call list in the enterprise parameter then every phone we will log into, select the phone, and on the top right corner, related link, there's something called add slash update busy lamp field speed dial. Click on go, a, top, a pop up window will come up like this, and you define the extension of the person you want to add, and any label or name you want to define. When you do that, it will look something like this. However, for the pre uh, BLF to work, you See, the telephone by default, only the first two lines is being marked as line. Remaining buttons that you see are marked as regular speed dial. But the fact that we are configuring BLF speed dial, we have to modify these two lines, line number three and line number four, to be act as a BLF speed dial. To do that, we have to first go to device menu, settings, phone button template. And we must scroll down until we find the model number of the phone that we are using, such as IP communicator and the right protocol. So I have a standard CIPC skinny BLF. Well, I copied this one. And I made sure the line number three and line number four is a speed dial with the BLF. So this is the special speed dial and this is the regular speed dial. So that's the difference. Oops. So once you save this, you need to apply this to the IP phone that you want to test this feature on. So this is let's say IP communicator. So we have applied that in the phone button template of that particular phone right here. Now we need to add the extension as a speed dial. So I'll go to device uh, related link, 
add update dvlam field and then select the extension that I want and the label I want for them which will ultimately end up showing right here now the regular the difference between regular speed dial so let's say I will add a regular speed dial close it, apply the config so we'll wait for the phone to reset So as you can see the regular speed dial looks like a gray color box whereas the VLF speed dial is more colorful with a little bit iconic so that you can tell if this is a phone right now he is uh, uh, idle so it's been available if I call that particular phone so let's say he calls someone as soon as he calls someone that from that line you notice in my phone I can see that he's busy the Java test so that's basically what it uh, what the BLF really does. Now in Call Manager 9, uh, prior to Call Manager 9, you used to have you always had this hunting option. Hunting allows you to route a call, well, allow the user to dial a pilot number, which will then route that call or distribute that call to a group of agent. Now, if the agent is not available, you will either get a fast busy or move on to the next one or ultimately go to voicemail but there is no way to queue the call and there is no way to announce uh, an audio saying uh, you know well, stay on, uh, uh, thank you for calling voice bootcamp all of our agents are busy please stay on the line so there is no way to tell a caller so this is where the uh, version 9.1 a native call queuing was added let me let me give a history forward native call queuing is not really a full fe full feature call center in call manager if you want to if you want to have a full fledged call manager you either have to move to UCCX or UCCE, Enterprise versus Express. Native call queuing leverage the use of music on hold. So basically when you press a call on hold, it goes to a music on hold rather than going to any sort of queue mechanism. Now to configure native, queue, native call queuing, first we need to create a line group. Now line group contains list of extensions of the agent that's going to receive the call. So we define the line group name any uh, river, uh, time, ring no answer timeout and the distribution algorithm how do, how do we want the call to go to the agent should it go one by one should it randomly select so and so if agent does not answer we will try the next member and the person who did not answer should go automatically log out so these are some of the options you may want to customize then you have hunt list so once the line group is created, you need to put the line group into a hunt list. So here's a hunt list I call sales hunt list and associate that line group that I created previous screen. Then we create a hunt pilot. Hunt pilot is the number user is gonna dial to access the agent. So you dial 2500 and then point it to this particular hunt list. Now below that same configuration page, there's called call queuing. Here we're saying, if we have to queue the call, please play this music file called sample audio source as a network hold. Now, maximum number of calls allowed in a queue is 32 simultaneous calls out of 100. When a queue is full, we can either disconnect the call or send the calls to an extension. If you're sending to extension and that extension belongs to a partition, then we must define a calling source space. So these are some of the settings that you may need to configure. Now, the audio file, like sample audio source, we gotta go to that particular configuration of the sample audio source, or you can upload your own. And in that audio source, at the bottom of the page, you'll have something called announcement setting. Here you define the announcement setting, such as initial announcement should play, welcome greeting sample, 
it should play always and wait in a queue sample if, if for periodic messages. So this is must be configured before you can have this uh, call native queuing set up in your environment. So an example would be, so let's say, I will go ahead and create a line group. We'll call this sales. And if a user does not answer, should be automatically log out. So in order for you to uh, log out and log back in, we must modify a soft key template. So I'm gonna sign extension 2004, extension 3003. Next step is to create a hunt list. Enable the hunt list. And then we're gonna add the line group that we created previously. All right, so that's that part is done. Next step is to create a hunt pilot. So because we already have a number 2500, so we're going to choose a different number, let's say 2000, send the calls to this hunt list we just created. And then below where it says call queuing, play this audio source. If no user member is answering, then send the calls to different extension. Could be a receptionist, for example, or a supervisor. All right. So once this is done, you go to music, uh, music on hold, music media resource, music on hold, audio source. Select the first audio source, and go down until you see initial announcement. Here we're going to say play the welcome greeting, always, and then secondary greeting wait in a queue sample file save now you can test so these two are my member form from here I'll dial Try again because the audio was down. Thank you for calling. It says thank you for calling. Will we try for your call to be a pretty normal representative? The call comes in here. Now if I press and hold, thank you for calling. it's gonna play Will the greeting again. Next available representative. Other callers at this time. Your call is very important to us. Please stay on the line and your call will be handled in so for 30 seconds, it's gonna play. It's gonna play this music on hold, and after 30 seconds, it's gonna announce it again. So let's wait for 30 seconds. So there you go. After 30 seconds, again, it's reminding you that all of, the, all of our agents are busy. Okay, so that's basically the native hunting options you have in your call manager. Last but not the least, uh, sorry, a hunt list has some parameters that you may want to modify in the service parameter, such as hunt group log off, uh, stop hunting out of bandwidth, such as call admission control. So again, if you need to, it's a good idea to go through the service parameters to ensure you are aware of those features. Meet Me Conference require, uh, is basically allows you to provide a conference service. When you want to join a conference, a manager can initiate a conference by pressing a Meet Me soft key followed by the Meet Me number. Anybody who wants to join the conference, they just simply need to dial the Meet Me number. So Meet Me uh, number 2600, uh, 26XX, it will pick up a random number. Uh, once you create that, we can then simply initiate a Meet Me conference. So I'll show you how that is done. On the call routing, go to Meet Me number, and there is a Meet Me number that I've created called 2300. 
So to join and meet me, I'm gonna open, uh, start a new call. Press the meet me soft key and then dial 2300. So you notice I'm in a conference. So on the other phone, I'm gonna dial just 2300. Only the first time you have to uh, dial the sorry press the soft key otherwise a uh, subsequent user will simply just log in or dial in to uh, uh, by dialing 30 uh, 2300 so meet me we'll talk about more details about this feature when we go to conference sections of this particular study kit and uh, for now just to give you an overview and that would be the end of this particular uh, chapter and hopefully we'll uh, see you in the next module